Hey everybody, my name is Sharon Quinn. I am the original Runway Diva and you are watching Model, Be Model Behavior. And what is Model Behavior, you ask? Model Behavior is an educational talk variety series that focuses on all things in the fashion industry. The premise is to educate people who aspire to have a career in fashion, be it out front as a model or backstage, on the proper steps to follow to have a successful career in fashion industry. Now today I am joined by two powerhouses in this business. I have Dale Noel who is the founder and president of True Model Management. Dale was a Ford model and one of the fashion industry's most successful and sought after fit models for nearly two decades before she founded True Model Management. Dale originally created True to manage her own career as a model, but clients repeatedly requested her referrals for additional models, and now she manages the entire team at True while overseeing the many details that go into making True the success it is for talent and clients. On my left, I have Gwen DeVoe. Gwen is a former freelance plus model turned fashion event producer who devotes her time to mentoring and developing young women interested in plus size modeling and entrepreneurship. In addition, Gwen is also the creator and executive producer of Full Figure Fashion Week, an annual presentation of the fashion industry's finest plus models, designers, retailers, boutiques, and businesses with products and services for the plus community. Welcome, ladies, to Model Behavior. Thank you. Thank Class you. is officially in session. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm going to start off the this uh, this episode with a topic that is is dear to my heart because almost every email I get is the same thing. And I, when people stop me on the street, they ask me the same question. And that question is, how do I get started mm -hmm. in plus modeling? I'm sure you guys have both gotten this question. <laughs> yes. you, you must get it every <laughs> day. Every day. Mm -hmm. yeah. So um, I know for me the answer that pops into my head is Google is your friend. I mean, we live in an, an information age where everyone has smartphones, they have laptops and tablets. So if you, you know, can turn on your computer to send me an email and ask me how you get started, you can do a Google search asking the same question mm -hmm. and you'd be surprised at the plethora of things mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. come up. Um, do you have experience on that? What, what, what do you suggest? I do. I think that you're right, that research is, is, is paramount. Um, you can save yourself a lot of time and a lot of money if you start and do your own research from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. But I also think that in conducting your research as well, you got to use research as the hard skills, is uh -huh. what I call them, and also devote a lot of time to your soft skills. And that soft skill is, number one, would be networking being in the right place at the right time with the right people and just making sure that the you surround yourself with people who are have the same goals, people that can help your career as a model because you feed off of that, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and Dale, you you can mm -hmm. you can probably expand on that being that you know, you own your own agency. I absolutely agree with you. I think networking in any business is something that is most important and in Modeling, modeling is a business. So I think many people who aren't trying to aspire to be a model don't view it that way and they just want the glamour and sometimes they don't realize how much hard work it is. Yes. And it is hard. <clears throat> yeah, it mm -hmm. really is. And you really need to be on your game. You need to be smart about it. I think education is huge and practice, practice, practice. It would be great if you, you know, meet networking in your local communities first and find a mentor and uh, that's very mentor. that's good yeah. mm -hmm. mentors great other friends who are models talk about things that work that don't work you know either freelance or work for an agent but seek the people who you're going to get good advice from and you know weed out anyone that uh, is going to bring you down the wrong path so i think you know education and being smart so research and networking is right up there and you just brought up a, a, a something that just just intrigued me how is it, how do you, how would you suggest that one, how do you know when you've spotted the wrong person, the person who isn't maybe going to mm -hmm. help you get to where it is you want to be? Well, I think anyone who's treating you, you know, not being positive, I mean, there can be criticism, but mm -hmm. you, it needs to be positive criticism that's, mm -hmm. and n not someone who's asking you to do something that's out of your comfort zone, mm -hmm. you know, you shouldn't be doing anything like illegal or, you know, 
you know, I would say because having that, street smarts uh, definitely helps oh, yeah. in yes. the business yeah. and you yes. need to be very resilient, you know, so you need to know who to talk to and when to move on. And can another model mentor another model? You see that, that I was going to bring that up because, you know, there's that competition piece. So I know for me in the back of my mind, I'm, I'm thinking, well, unless, you know, like I'm a size 18 and maybe you're a 14 and we're in two total different mm -hmm, weight classes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm thinking if you're the same size as me, then you're going up for the same size, the same jobs that I'm going up for. So how do I know that the advice you're giving me is not meant to deter me from getting the job? Because I've seen it done. Mm -hmm. It happens all the time. You know, they. I, while I think that there's a big pie and everyone can get a piece of the pie, mm -hmm. this industry makes you fight over one little piece of pie. And I've seen, I've true. seen. I've seen women very be competitive and very competitive. Getting <clears throat> more and more so you got to, I think you, you should use your instincts and just be smart about it and listen to your gut. If your gut mm -hmm. is telling you that something yep. is off, it probably is. Mm -hmm. The other thing I think you should do is you find out the, re the requirements for the business you want to be in. Now you and I, we all know that there is a height requirement. Mm -hmm. In some aspects, there's a weight requirement. You know, the, your curves need to be in proportion particularly Absolutely. in yeah. fit. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And the f height requirement usually is for the fashion, high fashion, editorial mm -hmm. type of jobs. They may not want to see anyone over, I mean, under 5'9", five, 5'10". Five, and it seems like they're going taller and taller, but not too tall. Right. <laughs> it's like six right. foot is the max. But, but you let's, have to be let's, in that sweet spot, like 5'11". Yeah, but know? let's be real. You can't be 5'6 with 5-inch heels on. Right. That's right. exactly. Yeah. That's, that's the not what they're not, well, not well, saying. they say. Yeah. Well, as long as you walk in tall. No. No, because the other tall ones are walking taller. Than that's you. right. That's yeah. right. So you, you you have to you know the re you have to know the requirements, and then from there, once you find out what they are, maybe you're not the the high fashion model. Mm -hmm. Right. You commercial. You, should, you gotta yeah, right. get in so where be, you fit in. That's right. Find your niche. And get in where you fit in. Yeah. I like that's that. Right. That's absolutely that's right. That's right. And I find that you know, unfortunately, a lot of people. They don't want to get in where they really fit at. I know that's bad, exactly. bad mm -hmm. English, but, you know, not everybody is meant to be the cover model. That's right. And let's keep it real. Mm -hmm. Cover models don't, that, the cover doesn't really pay a lot of money. Right. It's the tear sheet mm -hmm. that, you know, is, is worth its weight in gold. But unless you do your research, you don't really know that. And also know what constitute an image that is actually a tear sheet. Yes. Oh, yeah, come on, preach on that. We used to have that conversation with women so many times. What is a tear sheet, Sharon? Well, the te tear sheet is a copy of your work that runs, it, for me, it's something that runs in a major magazine that you cut out of, you cut out of the magazine and you put it in your book. Mm -hmm. What definition are you talking about? Well, I've seen tear sheets of models with like four guys behind them, you know, making shapes behind the heads. And, and I've seen clippings from uh, blogs. Uh, <laughs> well, I guess that's great now that the internet and, uh, See, and it gets a little bit gray. But, and well, you're an agent, water, though. <laughs> Is that, would you accept that? Would you tell a model to put that no. particular piece I, in her? No, and I would like it to keep as classy as you possibly can. That doesn't sound like something that every, should be, even if it was in a magazine. Well, it depends what market you're in, I guess. It's but true. every, that every industry, job you don't put in it your It depends book. what market you go for. Because mm -hmm. when, I, yeah. when, I, when I was working a lot, I used to, remember Ames? Mm -hmm. I worked a lot for Ames mm -hmm. with the mini pearl hats mm -hmm, and the, mm -hmm. the, the, the granny dresses. <laughs> yeah. And I worked for Kmart. And uh -huh. one, one time they put me in a teddy bear sweater with a Holly Berry shirt on it. And, <laughs> and you worked it, and I bet they sold millions. And uh, you know, I had my, fe my, my family members would find those ads and send them to me, <laughs> but there was no way I was putting that stuff in my book. You gotta know what stuff is considered mm -hmm. to be a tear sheet, and not every tear sheet is a, a good one. How do you distinguish what's gonna go in the book as opposed to, no, I, maybe we should just not mm -hmm. put that one in? Yeah, well, we look for facial expressions and, the eyes and the way you're moving and the outfit has to flatter your body and the angles need to be right. So depending on, you know, you might be wearing that sweater and yeah, there's a lot of money in that market or something yeah. and you're going for the catalog. <laughs> so if this is a girl that always books that, hers might 
that might be in her book. You never know because she might never get, no matter what outfit you put her in, she, the clients don't want her for that yeah. look. Yeah. But um, all kidding aside, that one probably wouldn't make the book. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, you like to get a flow, different looks. You don't want the same smile. You want to prove to the client and show them that, you know, you can sell almost anything or you look like you could be their customer and you're happy about it. <laughs> you know, you said smile. Let's let's stay on that for a moment because you I think that learning how to smile is mm -hmm. is it's important. Not, yeah, you, it's you difficult. have to know how to do that so you, and it's not an easy mm -hmm. thing. Yeah, you don't to, want your face to wrinkle. You <laughs> you want to make sure your eyes are still open and your you, cheekbones you, you look good. You want to show your, your teeth, teeth. You don't want to the gums and yeah. you know teeth and not and the, the gums. Neck, now that's like, interesting. Yeah, that's, how do you, how would you suggest? Because some people got, got big gums and little Exactly. Teeth. I mean, some people can't really help it, and that might not be their strongest. You know, th there are some models, like, do you remember Paulina? Like, she never opened she her mouth because her teeth were teeth. terrible until uh, you, many years later when that. she was already a supermodel. They fixed her. But her face, she didn't have to smile. <laughs> she got a lot of work. So I really think it depends. Everything is so specific to a client mm -hmm. and a model. Mm -hmm. And... Of course, there's the rogue person that might break the all the rules, but that's few and far yeah, between. Yeah, yeah. For the most part, clients like happy, well-rounded, yeah. stable, confident uh, models who are smart. And, and I don't think that's ever going to change. I mean, we talk about the fluctuating, you know, the fluctuation in what clients want. But there, I mean, yeah, who would want to work with someone who's not happy? Right. You know. Personality, I think that's, yeah, yeah, goes a long way, and you know there are those. You know, I'm sure there's some supermodels who made it and not being nice about it. But for the most part, if you want to score and if you want repeat business, and business, repeat you, business, business, you treat them right. well, and you absolutely arrive early, and you know on time is early. And most times, like oh, I was only five minutes late. I'm like. Time it's is late. money. This is yeah. a high-paying job. You know that position is very coveted. Well, you know, my mother used to say, "To be on time is to be late." It's absolutely, mm -hmm. and to be right. late oh, yeah, okay. is unacceptable. Right. Exactly, it's late unacceptable. is unacceptable. Gum chewing, bringing food to your jobs, and you know, yeah, because you could bring food. I don't mind if you bring snacks. <laughs> yeah. Don't bring other people to your job. No visitors on oh, set. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yes, and I should take that back because my backpack was mostly full of food, but not <laughs> when you're in the... You're like, what do you have in the Like, underwear, shoes, there's that food. For, like, my whole day was in my aid in elevators. People would be like, oh, yeah, you know, so... So, okay, not the food, but I meant, like, in front of your client, like, while you're working. I've actually oh, seen people, not. like, on the set... Pull out and, a like, you know, getting on the clothes. and I mean, you're in their clothes. You don't sit down in their clothes. You oh. don't... You know, that all the time. People are like, That's oh, yeah, huge. I'm just having my lunch the outfit where we're going to shoot and I'm yeah. like uh-uh that is like hung yeah. up beautifully even if the client tells you you don't have to take care of the clothes yeah you, you do. put them back better that's than they right. gave them that's to right you. because so, they're watching even right. when you think they're not mm -hmm. watching they are watching they are common that's right. courtesy that's right. and professionalism yeah that's someone's right. always watching even if someone right on the set saying that it's okay someone else's big brother's watching oh yeah <laughs> yeah you gotta mm -hmm. you gotta be and, smart yeah. um you should find out if you're photogenic Oh, definitely. Because there are a lot of beautiful women out there, and we know they they take not bad all pictures. That's right. Can take yeah, a good I'm not picture. the most photogenic. And that, that's <laughs> kid. I, 20 years in the business, I beg to differ. <laughs> but that's okay. I have a couple of angles. Go ahead, so let so you be wait, modest. Wait, be careful with the camera. <laughs> but see, that one that's good also, because you, up. You, like, you know your angles. And yeah. it, a smart model I'm not will, sure will learn in. that. <laughs> uh, but as far as being photogenic, well, you know, if, if only your man. And Auntie Lou and your, your mom and them are telling you, oh, you should be a model. You just take the most beautiful pictures and no one else is saying it. Nobody has stopped you in the street and said, you model, right? Yeah, you probably are not going to be a model. It's but can I tell you, I think that selfies are actually helping the industry. Oh, yeah, I believe so. I, I just People think... People are getting better taking pictures of this. <laughs> I mean, because people now are starting to look better to me. I think that because it's the practice, Sharon, mm -hmm. that you would, you would, you know, I mean, you get your practice in any way you can. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay, Sharon used to teach, go into the mirror and smile until you get it right. All right? Now, mm -hmm. they can yeah, do can selfies all, all day, day long. long. <laughs> exactly. And now, you know, selfies are cute. I, I've had to go through a couple selfies when I've been booking people because the pictures they send me, I'm like, you serious? Really? Uh, you got to have better pictures than this. Yes. And I have to go through your Facebook page because you have better pictures that's on true. your Facebook right, page yeah. than the ones you right. submit. That's true. Yeah, talking true. about pictures, that's a big thing. It's like 
Um, well, you can tell us what topic you want to talk about next. <laughs> no, 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 go, go, ahead, go, ahead, like, go ahead. So many times, you know, I think especially for a model who is trying to submit work to clients on their own or they're trying to find an agent, they should talk to professionals first or industry Absolutely. people Submissions. to find out what they really need because I've seen men and women trying to get in the industry and spend all this money on photos and then they submit them and you can't use one. You know, if you're a model starting out and you're like in development stage, you can send one's like natural beauty of yourself. Yes. So you can see what you look like without makeup Correct. and the perfect angles and you from the front side back. They don't have to be like all because done they can tell correct. from the picture yeah, if, the, if you have what it is right. that yeah. right. they so, look from. Let me just go back to that selfie mm -hmm. thing for a mm -hmm. moment. Mm -hmm. It's cute, you want to get your practice? Yes, get in your bathroom mirror and just mm -hmm. click, click, click. Mm -hmm. Don't send those in. Don't send those right, in. Right, right. That's I not agree. really considered no, a, not. A, mm -hmm. a professional mm -hmm. that's shot. Right. That's right. right. And um, I think that that's happening. And I still, now, when I'm casting, I get people who, they try to cop, crop the selfie. But I'm like, hey, the mirror is right there. I can see it. It's, it's a selfie. And so you don't want to send that. Right. Um, but getting started, you could just get, get your camera, your digital camera, and just take some natural pictures in mm -hmm. natural lighting mm -hmm. and send them in. And if you get positive feedback, mm -hmm. then you know you're on that's the right track. And then yes. that's when you need to go to the professionals and, and make out. an investment <clears throat> in yourself and, and in your in your career and well, what about this this trend in all this weird type of makeup you know the the blue shadow with the cat eye and blue and the blue and the mm -hmm. yellow lips i mean it's very editorial yeah, yeah. But you know what let's money. crawl mm -hmm. right right before yeah. we walk mm -hmm. you know i mean i was taught and this is again this is going back some years mm -hmm. I don't know if this has changed, but I know that I'm still looking for what I remember was pertinent back then. Mm -hmm. Less is best. Yes. As you just said, you yeah. want to see, okay, yeah, yeah, you know, you can have some of your shots with a full face of makeup, but a clean face yes. works Starting every time. Starting out the clean for sure. When you get all that crazy makeup, it's when you've already kind of made it and you're doing high fashion editorial and the client puts that on you. It's like that's not what you know, the scouts or yes. the bookers or the agencies. Sitting on want rocks with see. pigeons on your shoulder. <laughs> it's <laughs> Yeah, and being too sexy. I think a lot of people yeah. want oh, we didn't to talk about get that. like yes. you know, they're thinking, well, less is more is not always the case with clothing, you know? So you're Correct. like, you don't have to show me <laughs> everything. <laughs> you know, and so yeah. you know, we like to see the shape, the silhouette, and um, go from there. What do you think about because this is a pet peeve of mine, and I, I, I'm curious as to what, what do you, how do you feel about this whole movement with the tattoos now? It's not good for the, well, most clients and the clients that pay well, unless that is the type of look their customer base is, they don't want it. And the models that we have that, you know, are good in every other way have learned with like theater makeup and everything how to cover them up. And in most cases, we have models that they don't have tattoos and it's a company that, you know, they want tattoos, they put it on them for the shoot. We yes. have one model, they did her yes. entire back. We had to take measurements of every part of her back, her arms. And she was, you know, in a movie and then all these pictures of her and she looked like she was the part, but they put it on her, you know? Yeah, so so she, it's better if you come in clean and they make you what you want. Yeah. But we have, models, several of them, who actually started amazing, amazing jobs, like recurring jobs, and then got fired because they're like, okay, we could only use you so long, now the right. owner's coming, because right. we like you, you're cool, but we can't use you yeah. anymore. Yeah, and unfortunately, you know? in the plus industry, where the model, the, the age that women start modeling at is much older mm -hmm. than the straight size, a lot of them have already invested in this body art mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and there's not a thing they can do about it now you know yeah it's yeah. like you know you can you can cover it like up to a certain extent yeah. i mean but after a while i i would imagine that most clients will pass you over yeah because it, it's so much work over. it's right? easier to get somebody yeah. whose skin is unblemished mm -hmm. you got body graffiti coming up your whole leg yeah yeah I don't, and I it's just, so intense now it's yeah. not just a butterfly here, an indiscreet mm -hmm. pair of whatever wings here. It's, as Sharon said, the entire, mm -hmm. I mean, one time we thought this woman had on hose. Wow. Oh, Decorated, man. she had body art. We were on a casting call in one of the cities. She had art all the way down, and I've just learned how to be PC and call it art. 
I don't really think it's art all the time, but that's what I call it. Mm -hmm. It was all the time. I said, wow, those stockings are amazing. Sharon said, those are not stockings. Wow. It's a tattoo. And she was beautiful. She was gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Oh, we can't book you. We couldn't mm -hmm. book her. So I, I, yeah, uh, you need to think about that. To, I mean, they have lasers and things like that now, but that's painful, very costly, yeah, and, and can, I don't know if it takes it out completely all the time. And you, you may scar skin. From Yeah, that. some people don't. Yeah, some people scar. And you know that you you brought up an interesting thing um, about age because um, a lot of at least a lot of girls on the local level they they get into it a lot later after they've made these crucial mistakes of getting mm -hmm. um, tattoos mm -hmm. and piercings all in your eyebrow. I, I really don't understand all that mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah, what I don't get is the common sense or the lack of common sense. Mm -hmm. So you going on a casting, you don't try to try to cover it up. You know, I mean, at the very least, put on a shirt, so mm -hmm. the long sleeve that will cover it up. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, once you get through the door, maybe ask that question. How mm -hmm. do you feel about tattoos? Mm -hmm. I, I just, I need, I need my plus models to think more. But see, that's the great debate, because the debate is that a lot of these girls don't understand the different levels in the industry. And because that is so widely accepted, on the C circle, mm -hmm. and I won't use that word, but yeah, you know what word I'm yeah. That is so widely accepted. Pig innards. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, I said it. I said it. Pig innards. That That's That's what it is, you know, and it's so widely accepted that when they, when they are called upon to attend a different type of casting or whatever, this is all they know because no one on the C level is telling them the truth about what it takes to actually get to the next level. And so it's a free for all. And you a lot know, of they them will are not, argue. They're not going to get to the they're next not. level. And they will it's, argue it's, it's with you. Oh, well, no one else has told me I can't have a tattoo. Did you get paid for that, though? You didn't get paid for that. Mm. You know, there's a, there's a difference. There's a difference. It's a business. Some people are doing this for entertainment, and others are fully invested in this as a career, mm -hmm. okay? Absolutely. As a career or as a business for themselves, freelancing for themselves, being entrepreneurs for themselves. Mm -hmm. There's a difference. It's not on the same level. Yeah. Right. And no matter what level where you're starting as a, a model, it's you should have another job. That's so right. So you can invest That's right. in your there you go. That's invest right. in right. your right career. Track, girl. That's right. Yes. And, uh, That's right. Yeah, you really need mm -hmm. to have good pictures these days. The market is so competitive and people are requiring they must be current, they must yes. be clean and fresh, and you must have a variety of photos, different outfits, different facial expressions, different poses. Yeah, that picture so, of you from six years ago is so not So we it's tried, and, yeah, <laughs> we had tried at True Model Management in the beginning, like since we started as fit modeling, to submit models, you know, without really professional pictures. And for fit modeling, you know, the, our clients believed us. We said, you know, her body's great, she, we trained her, she's fantastic. and they, Get, they'd get jobs. Mm -hmm. Now, even for fit modeling, it's like most of the print models are becoming fit models because they see that there's steady work there and they're using all these great pictures. So the fit models have to, you know, we're revamping everything to elevate and bring it to the next level. And now mm -hmm. when you come in for print, it's like you have to commit have to, to buying commit to professional pictures. pictures. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, yeah. Well, practice all the time with any friend you know that has a camera, but you need to get the quality that the clients um, demand. Well, so you're just you're turn not the page gonna, and You're not going to get an agent without professional mm -hmm. pictures. You can show up with your book of 500 photos that mm -hmm. your friend shot mm -hmm. of you, mm -hmm. but yeah. any agency that you're going to go to, no matter what pictures you have, no matter how good they are, nine times out of ten, they're, they're going to make you shoot, shoot all over right. again with you'll, the photographers that they're comfortable exactly. with. You'll get an so. agency and you'll stay in development for a very long time. Yeah. Yes, so then it's yes. like, but I'm not getting any jobs. I've been, you know, there. but like you never got pictures that could get you a job. Right. So it's like you like really need to. Like actors who come to our castings with their actor headshots, headshots. Mm -hmm. yeah. and we go, hmm, this is not going to work. Right. <laughs> Do you have anything else? It's the same thing, you right. know? The investment is different. It's a different mm -hmm. type of investment. And it is an yeah, investment, so. and you want to keep, you have to keep reinvesting mm -hmm. in yourself. Yeah, it's not about taking your, your little check and going um, right. on a weekend to Atlantic City or wherever it is you want to go. Exactly. No, mm -hmm. you have to keep putting it back mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. so you can get better comp cards, or you mm -hmm. can shoot with that great photographer who is taking pictures and everybody's making yes. money off mm -hmm. of those Raving photos. About them. You have to think like that. And if if you can't get your your mind wrapped around that, one, you're not an entrepreneur, and this is not the business. Right, right. It's yeah. not the business. I agree. It's, just, yeah, it's just, not just paying money for photos either. It's like 
learning how to do your makeup, learning how to do your hair, investing in a couple of good outfits. Like you need to show up at these casting and you need to look Talk about oh, it. Oh, yes. clean, That's right. on point. That's right. And you have to look like you're walking on to That's you right. know, a photo shoot That's right. at every moment. You can't we just remember show we used to tell the girls on castings, you should have casting clothes. Mm -hmm. You absolutely should. Leave them should in have the casting closet, clothes. don't, don't wear them it. to the party. They need to be perfect. You know, back in the day, a crisp white shirt. Yeah, yeah was it mm -hmm. and we simple would say a simple pair yeah, of jeans simple. well be, fitting you know, jeans what, no fit designs is, yeah. exactly you know it's not about the belt yeah no bells and but whistles. it's just hard no bells no and whistles jewelry. exactly like some people try you know you were saying before less is more it's, it's mm -hmm. definitely so definitely and for you know, me you no, know back when i had a little hair i used to oh, yeah. slick it back in a ponytail <laughs> yeah. do my little natural makeup Very little clean. mascara yeah. and and go on a casting yeah. like that you you i i when i was working as a booker, and we had open calls. Chicks would come in. I was like, so "You, you, you not even gonna shave that little goatee you you wearing? Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, all right. So you just gonna come in? Yes, grooming is like very, that. very important in modeling. Did we talk about grooming? No, we yeah. didn't talk about grooming, but. Yes. Yes. Goatees, hair under the chin. You haven't waxed your brows. No, you got you a unibrow going on. It's all sorts of waxed stuff. Cleanly and... waxed. Yes. I mean, it's it's comical <laughs> some of the some of the things that that I I see, and that's how model behavior behavior came into play mm. because I see so many people whose hearts are in the right place, yeah. but they just are getting it yeah. wrong. Yeah. And yeah. no one is telling them. You just need some guidance, and you're doing a great thing to what, educate. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yes. That's what I'm trying to do. <laughs> Um, it's also about networking. Did we cover? Did we, did we talk about networking at all? No, we segued into something yeah, different. Yeah, we touched but on it a little but, uh, bit. We can go back. Network where you live. Find the plus modeling. If you're a plus model or if you're straight side, find the circuit where you live. Because I guarantee you, if you're living in a major city or somewhere close to a major city, there's a plus model circuit. Mm -hmm. yes. A lot of it is underground. Yes. Yep. But it is yeah. there. Someone knows someone. Someone so. knows. I'd like so that. that. Someone knows someone. And from there, you, you build your skills locally. And then you know, if you keep getting requested to do shows and stuff, then you know you know, yeah. you might have you might be on the right track. Well, we got to wrap this up because okay. we're running out of time. Um, but before we go, I want you you guys out there to remember and write it down if you got your pens and pencils out. Um, Remember that you can't change the game without first learning the rules to the game. And always try to surround yourself with positive people and positive things. My name is Sharon Quinn, and until the next time, thanks for watching Model Behavior and Class is officially dismissed. Thank you, ladies, for, for having me.